Hello and welcome back to the channel. God, I haven't seen that. I haven't, I haven't said that in such a long time. It's probably why I couldn't get it out of my mouth. Probably. That makes me think about something else. <laughs> this is already I was just started. thinking, hmm. <laughs> oh, out of your mouth, huh? Hmm. This has already started fantastically Let me better than I thought. Just have a drink of my tea with a chocolate finger. What, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, <coughs> welcome back, guys. We're doing something slightly different here. It's like a podcasty style because I actually have so much really, really beautiful footage that we took from when we were in Spain that I just couldn't share with I you guys because the audio fingers. was so bad that I decided um, I'd share it with you this way. Hello. <laughs> I can hear that. You know that I can pick that up on my microphone. I might just share that with everyone deliberately. What? <laughs> I not, didn't say anything. I'm not quite sure what you were saying. I but said nothing. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So this this beautiful footage, beautiful. I sound so Essexy when I talk. No, don't you I? don't. You actually talk differently when you're on podcasting. When you're doing this really? stuff, you talk differently to how you normally talk. Yeah. How interesting. Oh. You do. You sound like this. You sound almost like a presenter. That's what you do. <laughs> Hello, my name's Carlos Gesto. I don't normally talk like this, but when I'm trying to do a podcast, I do. I can't help it. It's like my robotic side that just comes out because and goes, beep, 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 beep. Take a breath. Let your shoulders go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just choked on my tea. I don't know. I just I just got all yoga then and thought, mm, oh. and I was like, do you know what? Fucking just whatever. You must relax your shoulders. It was take, take a, a breath, deep relax breath. Your shoulders. Sound like, I feel like I'm listening to Enigma. Take a deep and a breath. What? Enigma. <laughs> Can we say that online? <laughs> <laughs> Beg your pardon. I bet you guys have missed her laugh as well because it is absolutely fantastic and let's be honest, quite dirty. <laughs> <laughs> she has a great dirty laugh. I love it. Absolutely love it. <coughs> anyway, these lovely, 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 lovely scenery that we're looking that. at now that Beautiful. we haven't looked at, at all because we've been too busy talking about taking things out of our mouth and eating dirty chocolate fingers. But you know, <laughs> Cadbury's Cadbury's chocolate fingers. I add Cadbury's chocolate fingers. Do you know what? I'd really like to remember what was the name of that lake. This one here. Yeah. This is going down past. Um, uh, this is going to Bernie uh, this thing, isn't it? Not. No, Bermial is, is the one near Arenas the Ray. What's this road, was what was that road sign there? Oh God, I can't remember. I tell you what, anything that I can't remember right now, I will put up on screen for you guys because we are literally watching the footage with you guys at the same time. Because I don't know if you guys <laughs> will remember, I did a, a small music video to this actual bit of footage, um, and I had some three three sixty stuff, but. The problem is, is um, the audio was was buggered on it, so that's why it was yeah, like a short music video. Yeah, the audio was shocking, wasn't it? I think the the um, what was it called? The we had the GoPro, it's, the audio adapter for GoPro it was yeah. utterly shocking. We yeah. had so many issues with it. And we had, I think, we ended up with having two of them units, one or, or was it three? We definitely ended up taking we had one to or send two one back. back. Well, I think it was, I'm sure it was two because we had to, we had one that went down in Spain, yeah, it was and we had two. one before here. So we were on our third unit by the time we got here, and we were still having audio issues, weren't we? Yeah, it was definitely two. It was mm. definitely two that we'd sent back, and it was just ridiculous because we was in Spain, we couldn't find anywhere to get one. And we like getting one delivered was a nightmare, wasn't it? Because yeah. we were in the in the sticks in the middle of nowhere. But I will I will find out what the name of that lake is. It's absolutely gorgeous. Isn't this not the one that we did stock footage for that it sold? Is. Okay, it is. so that is called uh, Benanar. Be that's it, Benanar. Benanar. Yes, it mm. was. Oh my god. So that the, lake the, down there, guys. If you obviously you see it, the, the turquoise blue <clears> lake. We actually, um, oh, Carlos did some. Uh, drone footage of that <clears throat> and we actually uploaded that on our stock footage site because we we create commercial content for advertisers etc mm. and that was one of the the clips that sold funnily enough that's sold multiple times so far but it's it's not that image it's obviously from a different angle but very yeah. beautiful and it but nonetheless perhaps you can stunning. put a clip of it in the, the clip that we've actually used that sold yeah there you go guys you can I'll, have a look. I'll play the clip right now mm. so ta-da it's absolutely stunning it's, I, I don't know all the stats on it, like what kind of water it has in there. I know, I think they use it for um, for, for water, for the people, for fires and stuff, putting out fires in summertime because they yeah, get a lot they round do there. That. Yeah, I can put some information in a link down below if anyone's interested in how they use these, um, well, they call them pantanos or... or um, pantanos? 
Pantanos. Sí. And um, oh, there's something else that they call them as well. And I can't remember what it is. But yeah, they're really interesting. They use a lot of these because obviously Spain is full of a lot of um, olive trees and they have a lot of fires in the summer. They have a lot of these especially in the uh, south pools, right? yeah where they use the helicopters with the what are the what's the bucket called it's called something oh. they have a fire bucket which picks up the water and then they take it and drop it out over the mm. fires it's very clever we've watched a few of those god we actually witnessed one didn't we <laughs> yeah, from the we've got from some our footage village. somewhere which we also uploaded and i think yeah. has yeah. sold so yeah if we've got it or i can find it you can pop that in here as well and then they can see what we mean mm. so yeah this this bit of scenery was absolutely stunning but funny enough this this day where we was taking this footage, I didn't realise until I got to the top of the mountain, this piece of road that I'm driving up here now, that I actually had a leaky fork seal. Oh yeah, and it was right. it was on my left hand side, and I didn't realise till we got to the top, and I was desperate for a wee, so I went out, and obviously, when I came back, I saw the leaky fork seal, and thought, oh bugger. So then I started riding a little bit more careful. Obviously, this was a bit kind of twisty turvy it's absolutely yeah, lovely but really, really fast, tiny yeah, no not really not really i don't know if though if that was kilometers an hour or miles an hour that was kilometers because we know. had our bikes in kilometers i think we had them in kilometers yeah, but some of these turns are much tighter than they look on the camera actually yes that's the, <laughs> that, the thing with the with the gopro and the, and the wide having it because i think we shot, shot this super wide yeah it doesn't give you a really yeah. clear view and the road's actually very small so you get a lot of nutters and Spanish cars coming around the corner. Yeah, don't super you? tiny. Actually, the the road above our village. Um, I think I went out for a quick blast without you one morning. You did. And um, there were it was on a Sunday, and there was sports cars coming the opposite direction. That's I could it. hear I them you, a mile yeah. off, and I was like, "Wow, they're they're going for it." And these roads are super tiny, and because I managed to hear them, I pulled over a bit slightly, and I was like, mm. "I'm going to wait for these guys to go past because mm. they were tearing around." Mm -hmm. They did actually wave and thank me. So, oh, that's good. yeah, you got you got some good people in Spain actually, like mm -hmm. that, especially towards bikers and stuff. Mm -hmm. It is like the country for motorbiking. If you're a biker, it is a mo yeah, live motorcycling Spain. mecca, I would say, because the roads are just oh my god. You could spend your time riding around mm. Spain mm. alone for years and never ever ride all the decent roads over there it's so massive <clears throat> and also you've got such a difference in scenery from one area to the to the other so from north uh northern spain sort of where you're you're from in galicia area very green very it's very different. green and mountainous and beautiful and a little bit rainy almost and towards kent side kind of countryside look right uh, some of it if you get the flatter areas well, it's not really, I mean no, you've got the teletubby really. section yeah the well, teletubby yeah. section which yeah. is near um Begins with an S. What's the top rich part of? Is it Santander? Uh, Santander so is where Sa you come yeah. on the boat. Yeah. Yeah, where you come in on a boat. So Santander is actually known for being quite wealthy, I think, around that area. Mm. And it's beautiful, green, lushy, amazing, stunning, but with like incredible roads. Mm. And then, like you said, you come further south, and then you've got the archipelago. If that's how you say it correctly. Yeah. Because the whole middle section of Spain is raised, so you go up there, and it's a bit cooler, so green. Then you go into the south. Talking about Madrid area and all that, they're all up on the that's right on yeah. the higher area, aren't they? <clears throat> that and uh, Cuenca. Cuenca is a lovely place mm. to ride as well. Oh, Cuenca, oh, absolutely stunning around mm. there. I love it. I love it. Really nice. A actually, funny enough, I've just remembered something that I wanted to talk to you guys today about. Or anyway, me and Emma was going to discuss, and uh, I just wanted to ask her about getting back on the bike because obviously, I know she's been struggling and we've we've got no excuse because we've had the weather for it now but haven't really had the motivation to get on the bikes and mine's for a slightly different reason but i believe yours is because you're st are you still struggling with getting back on a bike yeah, yeah i do well especially because we live in the middle of bloody london it's it's so busy with cars and things and i think the, the problem is is the accident that accident has obviously taken me you know let's be honest we're we're a year a year and two weeks in now and i still got pain in my foot i still can't balance properly so it was a massive accident for me it's taken a year to recover to the point that i can use my leg properly um but it still doesn't work as well as it should and of course that leaves me with trauma i guess talking about legs i, I might have to blur this bit of footage out. oh no you're not gonna see your willy bob are we i think so oh no yes <laughs> 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 I can see his willy, guys. 
I'm pretty sure you're going to get that blurred out, but to like, be, to be hooray, fair, I really? The, I, forgot, <laughs> I forgot the GoPro. I forgot the GoPro. I'm going to do a really nice long blur. Do it, yeah. Like this. And then, and then I'm just going to, oh, Christ, all right, wait. Put it away. <laughs> Put it away. <laughs> Stop covering it up. I want to look. Well, I don't want any neighbours seeing. Like, see someone might be having binoculars <laughs> out there looking in the room and they might see my um, PC screen. All right. All right, yeah. Tw three times in one video. Nice. All right. Oh, gosh, that looks painful. Don't do that with it. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, do you know what? We'd had coffee. And when you have coffee... You piss more than you should. Yes. Oh, fourth go. Covered it over with your... Well, I had no tissue with me. <laughs> what do you expect? So that's how you dry your really when you've got no tissue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, and then, don't and then you wash it. Don't ask people you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this will be very well blurred. Yes. <laughs> I hope no one can unblur it. They can't reverse that, can they? As long as it's not pixelated. Because if you do the pixel, maybe they could change where the pixels are and put them in the right order. I would suggest you put a block of something. No, just don't put it on there. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what to do. A block of wood. Just chop out the bottom of the video for that bit. Uh, or, or a block of wood. Just put a large two by four in the way <laughs> and get it to animate. <laughs> so, obviously, yeah, Emma's struggling to get back on the bike. And uh, to be honest, for me, I think I've kind of fallen out of love with my bike at the moment. Um, and and it's not like there's anything really wrong with it either. And I know that it's the kind of stuff that you could sort yourself to make it your kind of bike. But I'm like, do I really want to spend the money on sorting it and making it my bike? Because there's other stuff out there that I quite like. Like Obviously, you know, I love the MT-09. Mm. That's a lighter bike with more top end. Not that that's a good thing for me. Um, more torque, less weight, and where we store our bikes is quite like we have to go for a, a narrow section because they're locked away, and then they're like we go through this alleyway, right? And it's it's really tight. So I mean, it's not too bad, but because of the weight of the bike, and I feel like the 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 way the the weight of, is 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 top heavy it's kind of it feels awkward to manipulate it around and stuff unless the bike's turned on i don't Do you know have that I mean? problem i have to say i don't Do think not? That, no i don't think it's he heavy to manipulate i don't so think I'm it's just a, a weak ass pussy i think my my issue is purely that i was still so absolutely in love with my reggie repsol and the fact that that's been taken away from me mm. means it's taken me a while to get my head around this new bike. And I, and I have to say, we, although I've only ridden it four times this year, <clears throat> I'm obviously thinking of selling it now because I'm not sure whether I want to keep riding. No, that's a lie. Of course I want to keep riding, but I'm, fu I'm fucking struggling in my head about how to get around, get, get around the, the craziness that goes on in my brain mm -hmm. because my brain keeps saying, no, don't go out, you're going to die, right? Because mm. because I almost died last time. <laughs> um, so strange. Why well, I don't have that? I, I think it's because I, I was I saw it coming, but I just I really don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have that problem with it. Well, you know, you you know how my brain works. I'm not good with things being out of control. So mm. the fact that that was completely out of my out of my control and I didn't see it coming because I was hit from behind was a uh, yeah, it's a major factor in it. And also, I think my main issue is I miss my bike. I miss Reggie. I miss the feel yeah. of riding and how easy he was to ride and how he just, I could point him at a corner and say, just do that corner for me, Reg. And it, it just fell in and went round it on its own almost, you know? Yeah. Do, do you know what? I have to say that the, the Fireblade, right, when I first got it, because I'd come from the MT-09 upright, I was kind of like, mm, I don't know, it's all like cramped and you're like down like this in this sporty kind mm. of position I'm like oh but you just open the throttle on it and you'd go I forgive you for all your sins <laughs> so I struggled at first but then I think halfway through and then definitely the last quarter of owning the bike mm. I absolutely loved that bike I, mm. it was amazing the pickup was just everything on it insane mm. it was just an absolute weapon um and we actually did uh, a little stint on the motorway in Spain, didn't we? We won't say what motorway or where, but we did pin them all the way because mm -hmm. we had the whole motorway to ourselves with a couple of friends. Mm. And it was insane. Insane. I can't remember what, what road you got to, actually. I know I do remember hitting 135 at some point. 
but I don't remember if that was on a first Hallium or not because it's probably a little bit tighter and faster and mm -hmm. I don't really know what the 600s do to be honest with you or not because I never used to look down when I was pinned so who the fuck knows yeah <coughs> although yeah I think I think one th 130 something no, it's got to be more than that. You must Probably. have been hitting 140, 150, I'm surely. Not, I have no idea. What I'm saying is, is the last time I looked down, I remember looking and seeing it was 135. However, like I said, when I'm pinned, I don't bother looking down. I don't need to know yeah, my speed. Yeah, I need no, to know something's it's not going to hit me. Yeah, you need to know what's coming up. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Although we had that motorway to ourselves. We did. I don't think I should really say what speed I, I reached. Why? What difference does it make? We're all bikers here, right? Well, you know, uh, oh, raise your p t torches and pitchforks, go after him, he's insane. But, yeah, we've all done it, haven't we, to be fair? I don't care so. what other people think of me these days. <laughs> no, true, you don't, which is something that I love Because I'm comfortable in, my, in the fact that I'm a nice person, and if I choose to speed, I do it where there's no other people, and therefore if I crash and kill myself, it's my own fault, as long as I'm not damaging anyone else. As large, yeah. Yeah. yeah, except I don't I see have, the problem. So. Well, yes, you almost killed me, but, you know, you've learned uh, your lesson, hopefully. Yes, yes, I have definitely changed my riding style quite a bit. Um, I definitely think that I've noticed, even though it's <coughs> still as quick, I'd say, but I've definitely noticed that it's a lot more um, controlled and I'm looking further ahead and I'm, I'm noticing more things and I'm thinking to myself, OK, I'll slow down here and I'll tend to be slower into blinder corners and stuff like so that. So all the things I was telling him when he first started riding. Yeah, yeah, whatever, he whatever. Had to, he had to kill me first. <laughs> to take notice. <laughs> anyway. God, look at the roads, man. Look, so how, like, how many vehicles have we seen? Like None. No. What are your thoughts about why you think you're having problems getting on the bike? Is it because you, you're not so interested in your bike, do you think? Or do you think it's because of the accident or a bit of both or what? Or I... Or I the wouldn't, country we're in or I wouldn't say it was the accident to be honest because I do feel absolutely fine on the bike getting on it and, and everything I think that it's the bike itself feels a bit heavy mm. I'm not keen on the tires I know that's an easy fix I'm not so keen on the weight of the bike I know it's it feels heavy when I'm moving it around mm. but also because the handlebars are wider than the fire blade it's I'm having awkward manoeuvrability getting it out from the the, the lock up. Do you but think that's because you're a Smurf, though. It might be because I'm a Smurf, yes, because I'm quite short and low down. So <laughs> pulling it, it does feel like quite a high bike, to be fair. Although the seating position is not too high. Although as Smurf goes, you are the coolest Smurf I've known because like Thanks. being a Spanish Smurf with super sexy brown skin. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, and and I'm not blue. You do <laughs> exactly. I'm blue. I'm a blue bird. <laughs> so. Yeah, the handlebars, the, the, the tyres, and there's little bits and pieces that could be done. But I also find it to be so expensive on petrol. And I'm not just meaning at the moment. I'm meaning that I, I truly do believe that I was getting better mileage out of the Fireblade than I, than I am out of the CB1000R. And the reason being, I think, is because of the way it's tuned. Oh, so the CB1000R is, uh, is really talky, isn't it? Whereas these were highly tuned for, you know, race speeds and stuff. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> I mean, obviously they were road bikes and not race bikes, but they are set up completely differently for what they were doing. And and to be fair, they're fine tuned to run at high revs, etc., etc. Mm. So but chances are they're more fuel efficient. <coughs> they were obviously lighter. But I do have to say, it is it is probably, or well, definitely the second most beautiful bike I've ever owned because the Fireblade was the prettiest, obviously, because mm. sports bikes, I don't care what anyone says, but in my opinion, sports bikes are the best looking bikes, end of. They're stunning. But the CB1000R, I've got a, we've got 2018 models, mm. absolutely stunning. I think there's literally nine bits of plastic on it, the rest of it is all metal, and the craftsmanship, the workmanship, it's really beautiful, it's really nice. I think maybe just changing the suspension and the tyres might sort it for me. I find it fascinating that men can think about their vehicles and know how much plastic's on it. 
<laughs> like all the idiosyncrasies, like all the little bits and pieces that you go, yeah, because it's, it weighs this and it does that and it does this and blah, blah, blah. And nine it's, bits of plastic. It's wet <laughs> weight it is and it's got nine bits of plastic. And I'm, not, and I'm sitting here thinking, I just want to ride mine. I don't give a shit what, what it's made of or how many fucking screws it's got. Or <laughs> Do you know what? I was watching. It's all screwed in tight. I was watching another YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And this other YouTube video that I was watching, the guy said there's like literally nine bits of plastic on it and it just stuck with me. So it became a thing now when I'm talking to people. I was like, oh, yeah, it's really beautifully designed. It's da da da. Nine bits of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> what, you bottles or I don't know? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. So your original question was, have you fallen out of love with, your, with biking? And initially, when I started, when you said about doing this, I actually thought, yeah, yeah, I have. And watching this and thinking about riding my bike and my Reggie, I want to go out and get on my bike now. So I really? haven't fallen out of love with it. I just feel a bit sad that I can't. Oh, that's okay. Get my head around riding with comfort anymore, you know? <clears throat> well, do you know what? Maybe it's the bike, maybe it's the location we're in. Like we said, Spain's a nightmare. Um, not, it's not Spain's a nightmare, like it, London's a nightmare. Yeah, I just around here. Yeah, I there's, think... there's no decent roads. There's no there's there's people that can't drive more and more on a daily basis. We're seeing people that just can't actually drive. Mm. So who knows? Well, I think also <clears throat> the the fact that you've got so many people here where we are, and a lot of them can't drive, and it's a mixed culture here. They're from mm. all over the world with yes. different licenses that don't know our road signs and things. There's a lot of stuff that goes on around here now that is quite frankly terrifying driving wise because they don't they just pull out like at the last second someone's mm. pulling out in front of you without indicating and then you see it's some old deer that's about 25 billion years old and yeah didn't but, originate in london and do you know what i mean so i must admit i do think that i sometimes get used to that a bit though like we've been here for, for such a time now that I, i'm starting to get used to it and you kind of you're checking people's tires to see the direction of the tire rather yeah. than the indicator and you're mm -hmm. looking to see if you've caught someone's eyes in the mirror you can and, see them in the mirror, and, yeah. and stuff like that and i don't I, I don't care what anyone says like if you look at a driver in the in the eyes long enough they will turn around and see you so whether they then say oh sorry mate i didn't see you i don't know is another matter mm. however it works for me every time and I, I funny enough i said that on a comment on one of the groups and someone said yeah, whatever, like that's going to work, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, no, it does. It's yeah, worked for me every single you, time. Because if they see you, they're aware that you're there. Yeah, I think there's And especially a... if you look into someone's eyes, because when you look into someone's eyes, like they say, it's the windows to the soul. And therefore, if you catch someone eye to eye, they actually see you. Yeah, that's, you know? that's what I thought. That's kind of where I was going. What yeah. I was going to say was I think that, that if you look in their eyes, they then see you. Like it's an actual, uh, they, they see another person yeah, and think, just, oh shit, not just a bike not or just a, lump of metal, a vehicle. Yeah. yeah, they go, oh, there's, there's someone on that, you know, because mm. they look directly at your, your lid. So I, I find it totally different. Look at this scenery. It's amazing. stunning, guys. It is utterly amazing. This is exactly why I wanted to share this stuff with, with you guys. Because, oh, funny enough, was this, no, because this was the Forks Hill day, so it wasn't poopy day, but there's another bit of footage that poopy I wanted. Poopy day? Yeah, I had a poopy day where basically we was riding along one of the roads round, it was the same kind of mountain pass, but a different bit of road. Oh, are you talking? No, no, I'm oh. talking when, the, when, you took a shit when there was absolutely <laughs> tons of goat poo all oh, over the road. Yes, and we okay, started playing yeah, the game of can we miss the, the, miss the, goat, the poo. goat poo? So we was like weaving around and I've got footage of that, but mm. that's for another day, I guess. Anyway, please comment below um, and let us know what are your thoughts? Have you ever fallen out of love with motorbiking or your bike in general? What did you do to fix it? Did, did you sort the bike? Did you chop it in, get another one? What are your reasons for swapping bikes? I'd be really interested to know, actually. Yeah, have any of you had an accident that stopped you getting back on a bike for a, you know, a few months or a mm. few years or, or whatever or however long? It'd be <laughs> interesting to know. Yeah, absolutely. Know. Really would. And, and watch out for my new project that I'm working on. Mm, we'll, we'll give you a bit more information on that. Anyway, at some point, toodle pips, toodle pip chums, toodle pip chums. <laughs> <laughs>